some of us may be thinking, hmm, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the um, leader of Tibet. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the leader of um, 14 million, or the Pope of for the 14 million um, Buddhist tour of the Tibetan tradition. Probably more now, because we're just including the Asian area. And what does he have to do with us? And um, he's not my guru, and uh, you know he's a great Lama and all that. We may be thinking all that, and we have every right to think that. And there's nothing wrong, there's no negative karma. But let me just explain something in brief, why it's important that we generate merits for His Holiness to live long. For His Holiness to live long, it doesn't come from His karma, it comes from the student's side the disciple side, and how much the disciples make it conducive for the Lama to carry out the Dharma. And when I say Lama, I'm not only talking about Tibetan Lamas, I'm talking about all teachers who teach sincerely, who have sacrificed their lives for many, many years, and who teach very sincerely and continuously and without ever giving up. For them to be able to teach and for them to manifest teaching and to have the conducence for the teaching, conducive situation for the teaching that must be created by the persons or people who receive the teachings for those who wish to who are who have received the teachings it's very very important for us to res- to create the condi- conducive conditions for example to have a clean healthy environment where we can convey the dharma e- example in this case a dharma center okay a temple um a b to have to have people who run the Dharma Center who don't say, oh, I'm busy, oh, I have to do uh, work, oh, I'm, I'm involved, or my family um, has this problem, or I have to go here, or I'm sick. But there are people in our group, and there are many now, who irregardless of time, schedule, personal work, commitments, and earning money, they actually put that aside, and they come and they run the center. And on top of that, there are people here who are married and who have kids, who have pets, and who really have to pay the bills, but yet they're still able to show up and make even more time to run the center so that all of us can have the joy, the honor, the great fortune to listen to the Holy Dharma and to get together to pray. And I must say with humility, that I've been around for many, many years in many Dharma centers. Our center is very sincere. And we do make, we do make mistakes. And we do get angry because we're people. But the rate of us coming over our anger and mistakes is much faster than other places. Why? Because I feel our people really, 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 really apply the Dharma. I feel that. Why is that? Because they have a nasty, gnarling, bulldog teacher always barking and sending nasty SMSs to them. See, when your teacher is in India and he can astrally come here and check on you, you may not see him, he can see you at the end. But when your teacher doesn't have astral powers and he hangs around the neighborhood where you live, he has webcams, spies, friends, reports, he eavesdrops, he, he hangs around out of uniform, behind pillars, and he sees what you're doing. And when he tells you what you're doing, he tells you that He knows what you're doing. So he leads you to believe that he's perhaps cut his forehead open and stuck a third eye in there. In the Dalai Lama's case, it's developed due to the central channel opening. In people like my cases, we had to insert a third eye, but it went gangrene, so I removed it out. So my point is, there's a difference. And our center is very beautiful. And I will say this, and I've never said things like this before, but I will say it without ego, without bias. Our center is filled with people from different nations. This is all, it usually is quite filled if we announce that I'm coming because people like to come and see a show. Uh, A Dharma, I don't know, show, yes. So in our center, we have international people from all over the world. And we can all get together and we can all learn in different levels and different walks of life. We can all get together. Why? Because our center is not interested in anything but conveying the Dharma. We're not interested in membership. We need membership by law because people who convene here must be members. And um, 
We don't chase after people for donations. We need donations, but that's not the criteria. You never get charged for anything. And our center follows a tradition that is not made up. It is a tradition of the Holy Gundan Monastery. And if any of you know, most of you do already, because many of you have traveled to Gundan with me, Gundan Monastery is the mother and the father of all Gilukpa monasteries. So the largest um, form of Dharma in the world is the Gilukpa. And that is not it's better or worse. It's that the people need this form at this time. So it becomes the largest form. It's not that it's better or worse. And therefore, and therefore this tradition all the Gilupa Lamas, all the Gilupa teachers, and there are thousands of Gilupa temples, and there are thousands of Gilupa centers around the world, all take their inspiration and their model upon one of the Gilupa monasteries. And they all take their model and inspiration upon Gandhin itself. So what I institute here, how people sit, and how people chant, and what we do, the prayers, and what we learn, everything is according to the Holy Gandhin Monastery. And Gandhin Monastery, for some of you new people, currently have 3,000 monks. You should be interested in learning what it's about, and you should receive a CD. Um, Sing Piao and the Kichara Media and Publication Department is working very hard now with Sharon, with her beautiful voice, to um, get more, uh, how to say, narration out. And they're, I think, halfway done, is it? Halfway done. So you can see the CD of our recent trip and what we've done, and see Condon Monastery because it's a different world altogether, yet it's so nearby. And we base everything on that. I base everything on that. So what I teach here is based on Ganden. What I share with you is based on Ganden. And the uh, set of regulations and rules that help us to make us grow is based somewhat on Ganden. Not totally because we're not ordained. So therefore, here we have a very pure center because it's based on something pure. I'm not pure, but if I follow the rules, then it becomes something like that. So this center is not into politics. You know, who's your lama, who's good, who's bad, what center, this and that. No. We're not interested in the politics. I'll tell you why. Outside of these walls, the whole planet is involved in politics. And it's been going on for millennium after millennium, and no one became Buddha. So in these walls, we don't get involved in politics. Although we have politics in us, we don't get involved for a few hours. Why? Politics doesn't help us. If we look in the mirror... We're losing our hair, we're getting older, and we're a few years away from death. What matters at the time of death is not who, what, where, how many, how much. What's important is how much our mind has transformed. How much our mind has transformed will be reflected by our body, our speech. Very clearly. How consistent we are in benefiting others. How consistent we are in our practices, in guru devotion, in samaya. How consistent we are in doing our prayers, how consistent we are ultimately in battling ourselves shows how advanced our practice is. If our consistency in battling ourselves, which is an inner battle that no one can see and we can't advertise either, once we advertise, it's not a battle. It's not a battle anymore. Advertising is contradictory to humility, which is taught by Lama Tsongkhapa. Even the highest Lamas in Gandhan Monastery, I mean really, really very advanced in meditations, always walk around very humble and they tell you they're ordinary beings. Every sign tells you they're not and yet they still manifest like that. So that's another tradition that's very special in the Gandhian tradition is be very humble and never, never showing anything that's better than the other person. And if the other person observes that you are better, it is by your consistency in the practice, in your commitments, in your samayas. And especially, most important, in your personal battle with yourself. What's that battle? It's a positive battle. It's a battle of breaking habituations that bring us unhappiness, that encourage anger, that encourage um, um, schism, that encourage separation, that encourage fighting against our parents, that encourage not appreciating, kindness, appreciating the kindness of others, encouraging winning over others at the expense of others. So that battle, that battle is very worthwhile because, because... In the end, nothing matters at all except how many people we made happy without motivation, without personal gain. How many people we have really put on the path of Dharma. If we check ourselves now, how many people have we really brought to the Dharma and they've stayed onto the Dharma and they practice? How many? That will reflect our personal 
level of accomplishments. Why? A parrot can parrot, but a parrot is not believable. It's parroting. So like that, this personal battle that we have every single day is very difficult. It's more harder than blowing up a mountain, building skyscrapers, reclaiming land from the ocean, saving a heart victim, heart transplant. It's much more harder than that because you're dealing with something that has been with you for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. What is that? The self-cherishing mind. So when you engage in this battle of calming your anger, not creating schism, forgiving the other person, letting go of one's projections, when we let the other person feel better and we generate this kind of spontaneous thought again and again and again, it is very difficult because we're not used to doing that. It's not because we're bad. It's because we're not used to it. We've been told otherwise. So therefore, when we battle, we have to expect to lose. We have to expect to fall. But the, the point is, when we keep applying ourselves, what you notice is this. is not, not that you stop falling and you stop getting angry or you stop having jealousy and you stop slipping. That's not what you observe. What you observe is it becomes less. And when that happens, you're, when you actually fall, inverted commas, you're actually able to recover much faster. Much faster. And then you'll see it again and again and again. And that recovery rate, now please listen carefully, that when you get angry, that when you want to challenge, that when you want someone to lose, that when you want to get revenge, that when you want to hurt someone, the recovery rate of you not wanting to do that after you've done it or generated that thought or actually committed that action, the recovery rate of regret and not wanting to do it not wanting to do it and doing something else in reverse that recovery rate and how fast is your practice and if you apply yourself again and again and again you will see your recovery rate faster for anyone in this room to think oh I've gotten angry again I've, I've done this again I've done that oh never mind it doesn't work I give up wrong it is working do you know why the very fact that you have a conscience about it tells you it's working a conscience you see what we're talking about here? Look at all of us coming from such different backgrounds. All of you are very, very, very unique and educated and exposed. And all of you all come from different mindsets. Yet we can sit in one room and talk about a subject that is logical, that is concise, that is agreeable to all of us. Why is that? Because I'm telling you the truth. What is the truth? If we generate the mind that truly makes others happy, we will be happy. And what Buddhism is all about is to learn the techniques by listening to Dharma and reading the Dharma of understanding the problems of one's mind and the application of the antidotes and the, and the methodical and gradual change that occurs and to have a center and to have people around us, support groups, our Dharma brothers and sisters, help us, help us. And that gives us that support. Like anywhere, we need that support. We need that support. You know, we don't need to get up in front of everybody and say, Oh, hi. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Temuramchi. And I got angry 45 times this week. And everybody claps. Hi, Temuramchi. No, no. It's not AA. But it's something like that. We all need some kind of support group, right? So therefore, the Dharma Center is important because it provides a support group for all of us. And we can't look at the liaisons or elder students and, and everybody and say, hey, you know, you're per- you got to be perfect. And if they slip, then we throw a BF and then we walk out the door. We can't do that. Because why? Support doesn't mean you support me and then I always fall and then you take care of me. Poor me, poor me, poor me, pat me in the back. I get angry and therefore you have to be patient with me. I don't have to be patient with you because you're in the Dharma longer. No. No, because if you keep doing that, they ain't going to be in the Dharma long. So you become the senior students and let's see how you do, you do, how you fare. So we can't always be in an attitude that they need to take care of us. Why are they like that? Why is it like that? Why, 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 why? No, we need to be the ones to support others as well as get supported. So when we have the support back and forth, it's very, very beautiful. Why? Not one day, 
not one week. You will see over a due process of months and years a difference in your mind. Anybody who applies Lord Buddha's teachings well. And what I mean is not the teachings of, uh, um, um, you know, cutting your hair and becoming ascetics. If anybody apply the mind teachings, Lord Buddha, you will see, I promise you, and it's glorious, the transformation in your mind. You will see how your mind becomes lighter. How you accept things that you were totally unacceptable before. And how you deal with very difficult people. Because the fact is, there are difficult people out there. But there are two options. Run away from their difficulties or deal with it. Because we can't keep running. So what happens is, we will see our minds change. And then another very wonderful thing you will observe, that is a promise, is that we find this harmony around us become less. We find that people we have disharmony with become less. It may be last year we had disharmonious entanglements or words, cross of words and arguments with them maybe a hundred times. This year it can be 80 or 70. Next year it becomes 60, 50. And you say, well, you know, there... It doesn't matter because you're going to meet more people like that. And we can't spend our whole life changing the world. It's not possible. But we can spend our lives changing ourselves. When we change ourselves, the effect is the same. Just like instead of sweeping the planet free of dust and stones and pebbles so we can walk unimpeded and not hurting our foot, we can wear shoes. Much more easier. Same thing Shanti Deva says. So there are a lot of people out there who are self-righteous and, um, you know, they, they... they want to transfer, transform everybody around them. Buddha came. Jesus came. There are a lot of people still there. So the answer to all of that is we have 60 or 70 years of our life. Maybe 80. Maybe some people in China, 90. I don't know. But it's not going to be, you know, two, 300 years. And it's not going to be enough time, even if we've changed three, four, five thousand 5,000 people. Impossible to change so many people. And there are six realms. Multiply that by all the animals. Multiply that by the spirit realms by the hells, by the demigods and gods. Impossible at our level. So therefore, it's better if we change ourselves. When we apply the teachings to change ourselves, two things happen. A, we start changing. B, we create the merits and we create the causes and the circumstances for us indirectly. We are indirectly benefiting others because the cause of our change is others. From other sufferings we see, we derive compassion. We derive compassion. From that compassion, it pushes us to do something much, much more. That type of, type of mind is definitely possible. Definitely possible. And so therefore, therefore, real spiritual practice, in this case Buddhism, not only Buddhism, but in this case Buddhism, is this constant vigilance and awareness of our mind and how it interacts in our speech and our motivations and how we deal with other people. This is the real crust of spiritual practice. And every time we fail, inverted commas, and fall, and we rise up again and not stay there in our self-little made, you know, poor me, poor me thing, but we rise up again, and that speed of rising again up and saying, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to win. I'm going to overcome myself. Is spiritual practice. How fast you arise is how far you've become. I get angry, I get upset, I throw BFs, I do all types of things. I am a definitely, 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 definitely very dramatic. And I want a lot of attention. But it's become much less. And the amount of, when I get upset, and how long I actually hold it, is almost like that these days. I'm not bragging. I can tell you that, because I, I put effort towards it. I'm not telling you that I'm a Buddha. I'm telling you I put effort towards that. So I deserve to have less anger. I deserve it. And I'm not telling you that I'm great. I'm telling you it works. It definitely works. So therefore, therefore, that is our spiritual practice and results. And there are many people who have accomplished that. And they bring great wonders and great pleasure and great joy to many, many people in the world. And one of these people is His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness the Dalai Lama gives us great inspiration that one simple Buddhist monk with no possessions, 
shaved, in robes, don't have a supermodel body, doesn't sing great songs like Celine Dion, doesn't own, you know, I don't know, um, million, um, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 Rolls Royces, and um, doesn't even have a country or nothing, can focus on the mind trainings and transform. And not only Solomon, there are many lamas out there, many, too many to mention. So, through His Holiness's kind efforts of not giving up his practice and creating the centers of learning that was destroyed in Tibet again. And a whole new generation of teachers have cropped up with knowledge, with study, with debate, with contemplation, with learning is due solely to the kindness of His Holiness. So whether His Holiness is directly our guru or not, it doesn't really matter. Ansuki is not our guru. His Excellency uh, Dr. Mahathir is not our guru. Mother Teresa is not our guru, but we know what they have done. Nelson Mandela is not our guru, but we can definitely appreciate their contributions to humankind. We can contribute. Uh, we can appreciate. So therefore, His Holiness's hard work and good relations with a very kind Indian government has created many, many vast learning centers in India, where monasteries flourish today. Many of you have seen, have traveled with me recently, a few months ago. Example, our monastery is 3,000 monks. They don't sit and just chant. These monks study 15 to 20 years to receive their PhD, cum laude, in philosophy, debate, dialectics, and Buddha's teachings. They become great masters. Great masters around the world. Now, every single great master around the world, whatever tradition, has come from some monastic or monastery training in India. And those were established directly and indirectly by His Holiness. Without His Holiness, I would not even be here today. If I have any knowledge of Dharma, it is because of Gandhin and my gurus. If I have any gurus and Gan- if I have any gurus who have knowledge, it is because of Gandhin. And Gandhin is because of directly His Holiness the Dalai Lama's re-establishment program. So it's grown. When Gandhin escaped Tibet, there was only 150 very knowledgeable and great monks out of over 3,600 monks. The rest were killed. So only about 150 handful escaped. Very eminent masters who retaught the new generations. The generation right above me and then my generation. I'm considered the second. Without them, it's impossible. It's impossible. And all that came out, the food for the monastery, the clothes for the monks, the land, the place, their scriptural study, even the books that they had or by the kindness of His Holiness. And there are even monks now who don't have enough to f- food or tuberculosis. His Holiness the Dalai Lama directly sponsors their food and their meals. And that's one of my goals is to take that job away from His Holiness so he can expend his energy towards somewhere else, for Gandhin at least, that food and clothes and books and medicines can be provided for the 3,000 monks and growing. Because when you look at the old monks there who've been in exile for 40 years, they're in their late 70s, mid 70s, and they will not reside forever. And I know their one wish is that Gandhin and the knowledge and the tradition does not disappear. And there are many young monks there, very cute young monks. Many. And what happens is that this knowledge is like pouring from a large vase, vase into a cup, that the knowledge is not lost. So that these monks can go out into the world and not create um, temples that are empty with big statues we offer incense, but someone to teach, someone to answer questions, someone to explain. Because people would like to know. Now, as the Dalai Lama says, the age for a Lama to have a big status and sit on the big throne and say, hey, I'm a big Lama, give blessings, is over. Lamas have to have knowledge. So just like all of you sitting here listening to me and gaining knowledge, each time we meet, you gain some knowledge. That is the kindness of Gandhin. And Gandhin exists because of the kindness of His Holiness. So His Holiness's life is long and it's extended and no obstacles come for His Dharma growth. And He's surrounded by excellent students and sponsors and ministers and attendants and Ladrang people to carry out His instructions and do His work so His Dharma can spread. Then even more of what we experience here will grow in the world. That's not fanatical. That's logical. I have tremendous faith in His Holiness, just like I have tremendous faith in all my gurus. But it's not a fanatical. It is based on logic. 20 to 25 years of observation, 
again and again. I'm not sitting there always looking at but observation doesn't mean I'm looking for fault. It means that I believe, I understand, I've already seen, but I just see more things to reaffirm what I've seen many, many years ago. So therefore today, His Holiness has chosen to take rebirth into this world. This is the day He chose for some astrological um, uh, auspicious constellation. So this day is considered a very holy day because this individual took rebirth on purpose to benefit others as he has done for 14 incarnations continuously, unbroken. And therefore, if we can do that, that's pretty cool. Imagine, you know, you keep coming back and each time you come back, you're the same name and then you just add a number on it. You know, a Venerable Cha Song Peng Rinpoche, the fifth. Cha Song Peng Rinpoche, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. But then we hope Cha Song Peng Rinpoche, the twelfth, we don't have to visit him in a barn or in a zoo. We want him to come back as he is, with as Mei Wu's look alike. Cha's new hair makes him look like Mei Wu, which is not bad, but you know, Mei Wu is taller. <laughs> so in any case, when we do the offerings today, it may not be so wow, 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 like we can do in, in, in a monastic situation where we have land, and we can do pujas, we can put fi- prayer flags, we offer incense outside. But from our heart, we can pray. May His Holiness always manifest the perfect Dharma to us. May we create the conditions for that. May we create the conditions by transforming ourselves. May we create the conditions by loving others, forgiving our enemies, lessening our anger, becoming humble, and and forgiving ourselves for our mistakes and apologizing to others and ourselves for the mistakes we have made and not to bury our mistakes, not to bury what we have done and not to increase it. How do we create the causes for our Lama to live long? How? Any Lama is if we transform ourselves. If we transform ourselves, obstacles to getting teachings will be next to none or very small. When we transform ourselves, we create the karma and the merit that whatever projects we have with our lamas always goes smoothly and doesn't have a halt. People think, oh, why is there another obstacle to this project? What happened? Merits. To request, to create the circumstance. And then, and then, ourselves on an inner level to create the actual circumstances for our lama to get dharma teachings and for us to receive the dharma teachings on an outer level to contribute our time, our energy, our resources to the growth of dharma, a place where the dharma can grow, for example, the center. So the center exists today because of people who are just like any of you who have 24 hours in a day, 7 days a week, and 30 days or 31 days in a month. But they take time away and they contribute without saying, I'm busy. I have this, I have to do that, I have to survive, I have to earn a living. They don't say that. And, and many of them have kids. And they have very, very busy jobs. They work 12 to 15 hours a day. So therefore, for us to say we're busy, we don't have time, we can't make it, doesn't work. It doesn't work because, not because Temerim she says so, because we can all see. <laughs> we all have lives. So therefore, the outer cause is to have a center. It's organized. To do projects. To make projects fruition. Not to depend on the Lama to make the projects fruition. But we make the projects fruition. To make every department grow and fruition and benefit others. And most important is, most important is, outer projects to a fruition only if our inner mind transforms. So if we're always fighting with our Lama, if we're always showing a bad face or black face, we're always arguing and embarrassing our Lama, embarrassing ourselves. If we always ask why, 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 if we always ask what did I do wrong, and it's been years. If you still don't know what you do wrong, if the Lama's been telling you don't hear, you ain't going to hear, chances are. If I tell my puppy, my little doggy, oh, you did this wrong, this wrong, he's not going to understand. I think we're better than that. So the mantra we have is, I don't understand, I don't know what I did wrong, should be eradicated. The mantra is, I know what I did wrong, and I'm going to stop it now, should be our new mantra. The mantra, I don't know what I did wrong, om, before, hung pet, afterwards, must stop. Om, I don't know what I did wrong. Hong Pet. Om, I don't understand. Hong Pet. Om, I don't, I don't know why. Hong Pet. That mantra must be out. 
the new mantra of the day is Om, I know what I did and I'm going to stop hiding behind what I did and I'm going to stop pretending what, to not know what I did and face myself because I love myself. Hong Pei. It's a little longer, but it's a better mantra. <laughs> Much better. Because if we keep following the first mantra, we create the causes for our Lama not to teach. And if the Lama can teach, maybe we cannot be involved with the Lama. So there's no point in making great prayers. You know, I see students making great prayers. They know rituals. They're like, oh, oh my Lama, you know, oh, oh. And even when they mention Tem Ramchi's name, you know, most people, some people, they go, in the Tem Ramchi. But most people, most people, when they say Tem Ramchi, they go, oh, changed my life. According to JT, I'm a god. JT is this lady wearing orange. She just came from um, Sai Baba Center. <laughs> All right? So anyways, um, according to JT, I'm God. I'm Manjushri. I'm Zongkaba. And uh, let her win. Okay. I mean, that's what the Buddha taught us. Let them win. You win. I'm Manjushri. <laughs> so sometimes we have to let people win. You know, not, Don't always argue. I, I, I'm training myself not to argue. You win. In any case, um, if we want to create our lamas, work to grow and therefore benefit others and we want to benefit others if we can do what the lama does sayonara lama let's do it ourselves hey more the power to you let me know what you're doing you're going to start a temple give dharma teachings hey I'll, I'll do puja so that you'll be successful no jealousy at all do you know why if you want to pull the bull cart full of watermelons up the hill so that the people on the other side of the hill can get watermelons go ahead I'll wait on the other side with my fork and knife ready all right, I'm not going to argue with you or try to take this, this meritorious action away. You know, there's, there's a big bull cart full of watermelons. The people on the side, they want to eat it. They're thirsty, they're hungry, or whatever, whatnot. So you fight with me. Who gets to pull up the hill? Please. I'm, you know, you want to open another center? You want to teach them? Please, please. I, I, no competition at all. In fact, I'll throw some money at you if I get some, you know. I'll put in one of these. I'll put a thick one, too, a $1, $1 bills. Very thick. <laughs> And so I'm not going to argue. That's why I rejoice. Because the more of us there is, the better it is. More Dharma stores, better. More Dharma centers, better. No problem. More Dharma teachers, better. I'm not insecure. And there are many Dharma teachers out there better than me. They're better. No problem. Do you know why no problem? Let me be a little bitchy. Less work for me. That's why every, anybody who... Many people here know me more than 10 years. You know that's the truth. You know that's the God-given truth. Less work for me. That's it. I don't mind. Why fight with other Rinpoches and Lamas when they want to stay up all night, give teachings, initiations, and you know, do divinations, and, and talk to people and explain things to them over and over and over? Why fight with them? Bless you. Do it, Rinpoche. Do it. I say, yes. I give them tatas. I give them whatever they need to give other people. I help them. Why? Then when they're doing this job, I stay home and do my meditation with the DVD. Oh, no problem. I love DVD. I love horror movies. As Kandorori says, bring it on. That's right. So... So if we want to make our lamas' work grow, if we want to make our lamas' departments and projects grow, do you know how? We make our individual departments grow. When we make our individual departments grow, then people will be attracted to that, and more and more and more people will be benefited. And how to make our individual projects grow, that the lama has assigned us or whatever, we have to grow. We can't operate like we were operating last year, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 4 years ago. We have to operate now. You know, there are some people still doing things on the typewriter. Get with it. Get a PC. Get a PC. Can you imagine? There are some people that... And then when they make a mistake, they, you know, they go all over looking for whiteout. Silly. They should be like me. I can type with my eyes closed. What I'm typing, I know, but I can do it closed. <laughs> on the computer. In fact, I can do websites, you know. Uh, they appear out of emptiness and they go back to emptiness. But my point is we got to get with it. So we can't be acting and doing things like we did before. And the mantra of, I don't know what I did wrong. When do you take refuge? I took refuge and I started learning Dharma in 1943, 1971, 1983, 19, you know, 94, and now it's 2006 and you still don't know what you're doing wrong. You still don't understand, but I want to serve my Lama and help my Lama and benefit my Lama. Contradiction. So that the short, convenient mantra, Om, I don't know what I did wrong. Hong Pei, out. Om, I know what I did wrong. I regret it. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to do everything to transform myself. Hong Pei is a better mantra. 
much better. Better than Om Vajra Sata, Samaya Mamphala, then Sanadana, then Vajra Judah, then Vajra Much better. Why? Empty words based on the holy Sanskrit language, repeated, imperative, Om Vajra Sata, Om Vajra Sata, has brought us no benefit until now. So if we want that to work, we don't hide in a corner, don't know, pretend. And whatever wrongs we have done, whatever wrongs we have done, if the Lama says it's wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong. That's what Guru devotion is about. No and, if, and but. That's if you have taken your Lama as your Lama. You haven't taken your Lama as a Lama, you call your friends, you take him in a parking lot, and you know, you get him. After you say, oh, you know, you go to Bodhaya, you go to tree, you do ceremony, oh, he's my Guru, Guru, my Sifu. But when things go wrong, Sifu tells you that you're a bad boy, you're a bad girl. He's not my Sifu anymore. What you look for is a, 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 a baseball bat. Where's my Sifu? <laughs> lamas get it. You know why Lamas tell you? Lamas tell you what you did wrong. They tell you what you didn't do right. They, they tell you the truth. They're open for attack. Comedians get vegetables and fruits thrown at them on stage if they're not funny. Lamas, death threats. Hate mail. Hate email. And you know, some people don't even sign their email. From, they put initials. You think, who is there? Who? All night I'm sitting there because I don't have clairvoyance. Who? Who? Mm, I keep my friends up all night. Who do you think I'm? Lamas have to put up more because they tell you the truth. See, and real lamas, no offense, tell you the truth. Why? They care about you. And they feel they're in a position, they have a responsibility to tell you. If the lama hangs around and tells you, you're wonderful, you're fabulous, you know, you're, you're beautiful, you're great, you know, slipping in here. You know, something's wrong. The lama is shouting at you, telling you all, telling you what's wrong, and, you know, and, and explaining and criticizing. You know what it is? Your mother did the same thing. And your mother did it because she loves you. And now, your mother's bent over, bent forward, hunched, tired, chewing on her saliva, because she spent her whole life for you. Now you got a new mama, and that's Rinpoche. And that's why I'm your mama. So what happens is, if your mama tells you, it's like that, like that, like that, why is it when your mama tells you something you like, Rinpoche is Manjushri, when your mama tells you something you don't like, but I don't understand. You can understand. You will never understand. Just do it. Just do it. Now we understand why mama forced vegetables down our throats when we were a kid. Why we couldn't eat MMMs 24 hours a day. You know, it was delicious. Now we understand. We didn't that time. Similarly now. So the mantra all of us should never ever have is, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Open a book. Read the Lama Rim. Listen to one of the CDs from your lamas. Read the eight thought, verses of thought transformation. I don't understand what I did wrong. I don't know why it's like that. I, and, and this is my favorite mantra. Om, but I had a good motivation. <laughs> That's my favorite mantra, people. You know, you have a good motivation. That's fabulous because I, I didn't see the halo around your head when you walked in. I didn't see you duck. I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just, I didn't see that you were a Buddha and you're faultless. And this mantra of, but I had a good motivation. Yeah, that's fabulous. But you know what? It didn't come out right. Doesn't mean you're bad. It means don't change your motivation. Change your technique. So stop not changing your technique and keep chanting this chant. You know, we have a lot of students around the world. We have a lot of people around the world who refuse to face themselves. And they have this great chanting. Buddhist monks chant the sutras and the tantras. They chant the kangyur of the Buddha. You know, they sit there and chant and meditate. We have students around and say, oh, I have good motivation, I have good motivation, I have good motivation, I have good motivation. Have... What are they trying to say? Whatever the ma- mistakes they have made, exonerate them and forgive them and let it go because they don't want to change, so you have to change. But that's not right because then you let them suffer and create negative karma. That's not right. So what happens is, stop chanting that evil mantra I had a good motivation. Why can't you understand? You know, can you imagine these little people? Why can't the whole universe understand why, why I'm being blamed because I have a good motivation? Oh, save it with a good motivation. Why does the whole universe have to focus on you? Just you. You have to focus on the universe because you're one and there are many. Just as Shanti Deva says in the Bodhisattva Chadavatara. Just like His Holiness has taught in eight verses of thought transformation. So stop expecting the universe to understand you. You understand the universe. If you do that, 
and you transform yourself. Step by step, you will see changes. You know when you see changes, you know what happens? You will be happy. You will have harmony. You will have respect. You will have people around you that you have changed their lives. And I tell you, it is the best feeling in the world. To change someone's life. And you had no motive to take anything from them. And from the beginning, you had the motive, you had the aspiration to change their life and bring benefit to them with no motive. And when you see that happening, it is the best feeling in the world. It is the best payment in the world. For sure. Bring harmony to your parents. Bring harmony to your brothers and sisters. Bring harmony to your family. Bring harmony to your neighbors, to your people at your work, with your wife, with your husband, with your friends. Bring harmony to the people who hurt you. Bring harmony to the people who have damaged you. For the people who cheat you. For the people who lie and use you. Accept their harm and forgive them. For those who cover their lives and damages, forgive them and love them and wait for the opportunity to convey the Dharma to them with no motive. And whether they're rich or poor, expect nothing from them, not even praise, and convey the Dharma to them. For those who are in, in totally cannot get out of their negative habits and they're stuck in their negative habits, instead of always criticizing them out of hate and anger to change the change. We change by accepting, the, accepting them as they are, that they can't change at this time. It's like telling a tiger or a lion, stop killing, it's bad karma. At this moment, they can't. But we don't bring more harm to them. But most important is, take care of our parents. As the Dharma protector says, even giving a glass of water to our parents with good motivation generate waves of merit. Be kind to our parents and respect them, whatever they say. And love them. Do you know why we should love them? They're irreplaceable. And parents treasure their children. Because children today are very different. They're very different than 100 years ago, 50 years ago. They're not as dumb as they look. They're very, very exposed. A lot of these kids are smarter than me. I hate talking with them. I wear the yellow hat and I, in the end I look like the, the, the donkey. In any case... Be respectful to people around you. Everybody you meet, it's not easy. It can happen. And most important, this is the heart of the Buddhist teachings. We have all been hurt. We've all been cheated. We've all been used. Even high lamas, many high lamas have been cheated and used. Many. It is in their being used and cheated, you see their qualities arise and how they handle that. You see. So, for those who have been cheated and used, and all of us have, none of us, in previous lives and this life, none of us is, is free of that danger because we have created causes. Forgive those who cheat us. Why? Whatever they do to hurt us, they collected the karma. Unfortunately for them, the karma will come to them. But if we add to it the karma, we will create more karma with these people. Not necessary. Respect our elders. Respect the law of the land. Respect the law of the land. Very important to create harmony in our country, in this beautiful country, in every country we live in. And to pray for the ministers, to pray for the prime ministers and the leaders of this country that their good works may grow. Good works may grow. Don't think, what, 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 what. don't need to look, read newspapers, I'm not going to pray for them, I'll pray for them. No. All people have done good things. Pray for the ministers and the country and the government to grow. Who, what, no need to care. The Buddhas know who to bless. God knows who to bless. You don't need to keep a scorecard. Which minister is good and bad and tell God, tell Buddha. No need. You keep a scorecard on yourself because that's a pretty big scorecard already. And listen to the Dharma talks. Listen to the Dharma teachings. Apply effort. Why? Only by knowledge you can transform. So today we pray for His Holiness's long life. Why? Why do we pray for His Holiness's long life? So that many more centers, many more institutions, many more beneficial beings may arise. As long as his wholeness resides, it will grow. Not because he's a religious leader or spiritual or temporal leader. That doesn't apply to any of you. So he's a, he's a temporal leader or a spiritual leader of uh, whatever Tibetan Buddhism. Who cares? But he's a beneficial person. He, we care. I pray for Nelson Mandela to live long. When Mother Teresa was alive, 
I always prayed for a long life. When I heard she was sick, I would make offerings and pujas at my altar for her all the time. Because if she lived, many people would benefit even more. To me, it doesn't matter. I can't do what they do, but I can do something that they can do more of it. One of my previous lives, two incarnations ago, I was told in Gandin, um, after he was the abbot of Gandin, he became cancer ex-abbot emeritus. He retreated to a cave in Fasa and went into meditation. He went into meditation of White Tara, and during the White Tara retreat, it is said that he accepted the obstacles of the 13th Dalai Lama and um, died. It was said like that. I was told that. And my lamas, my lamas currently, without some of them know, some of them don't know, I don't know, always tell me, pray to White Tara, always. So there's some connection there. My point is this is, I think for many lifetimes I've prayed for His Holiness's long life. I think I have. I say that from um, inferential logic and consequences I observe, not that I can remember and know. I couldn't, I couldn't proclaim that. But in any case, my point is this, is today we've gathered here to do Tok offerings. Tok is, I've explained the benefits before. You can look on their website. So let's pray tonight. His Holiness may live long. Our parents may live long. And those of us who have lost our parents, may they take excellent rebirth. And by the merits generated from this, may we create an inner transformation with ourselves, that we create an outer transformation with everyone in every place and everyone, everything that we touch. Let's everybody who leave us have a good impression of us. A real good impression. That is very important. Very, very important. So therefore, I apologize again for showing up glamorously late. You think, yeah, glamorous for you. <laughs> and let's finish the rest of our pujas. That's my little Dharma talk. And I thank Kichara House or whoever's involved for this uh, beautiful new teaching throne. And at another time, when time is disposed, I will explain to you the significance of thrones, why we offer thrones, and what they're about. They're not a uniquely Tibetan tradition. Definitely not. Definitely not. So um, uh, I'll explain the significance of what it's about. But I would like to thank people for that. 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 People for that.